Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name's David and this is a Magic Book Review. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Friday. Yep, it's Friday. And on Friday, typically what I try to do is review magic books because magic books are awesome. <laughs> magic books are awesome. Uh, just to give you a for instance, let's say a magic book costs $30 or $40. Uh, inside that book, you're gonna find tons of card tricks, essays, magic theory, uh, just thoughts, ideas, brain droppings. You can spend that same $40 on a gaff deck and it does one thing, okay? One thing. So where's the value gonna be in your money, right? It's gonna be in magic books. If if this is something that you seriously wanna do, you wanna get better at magic, you wanna craft your skill, you wanna hone your skill, get better, improve, take it to the next level, I would strongly recommend that you start building a magic library. Personally, personally, I have been massively blessed that Mark Shandow has reached out to me three times now, three times to review his books, not just Harper Crown 2 that I most recently reviewed, Totally Free Will before that, and now Harper Crown, the original, the first one, the prequel, number one, Prime Alpha, the first. And of course, Harper Crown and Harper Crown 2 are both books on mentalism. They're both primarily books that contain mentalism effects and donations from other mentalists. So certainly, right off the top, we'd say, who is this book for? It's for people that are serious, right, about stepping up their mentalism game. I said in the previous video that I thought there was really useful information for any magician in it. And I, I still stand by that, including even in this one. Even in Harper Crown 1, the first five or so tricks are all coin tricks. <laughs> and even though those tricks have a mentalism theme, right? Because as soon as you start predicting things or bending objects, we just lop those into the mentalist category. But I would argue there's a lot of cool tricks in this book that a coin magician would love. I would also argue that all of the essays are universal as well. The essays are some of my favorite things. No, they were. They were my favorite things in this book. And I wish I could tear all these essays out of the book and mass produce them and get them in your hands because I think they are so wonderful. They were a joy to read and they contain some really useful information that I think, again, applies to everybody in the magic industry, not just mentalists. So what about this book? Harper Crown won $65, Hair Sign Press. Oh my goodness. Hair Sign Press makes the best books, the best books. 260 beautifully illustrated pages and of course, Phil Smith doing all the illustrations. All right, so what's in the book? You get a dedication right at the beginning. You have two forwards, Peter Turner, John Kerry, giants in their field, an introduction, and then it starts right off with an essay entitled, An Essay About My Father. This is about Ross, Mark Shandell's dad, talks about how his father was an inspiration to him, but at the same time, you also take this journey as his dad starts to get older and eventually goes blind. And so it's just a beautiful introduction, not just to the book, but also just to Mark, learning about him. And it, it's, it's so nice to have something personal like this in the book, that it's not just some cold, you know, magic textbook with no heart, no feeling, like you immediately get sucked into this book and you genuinely care about Mark and his voice. Then, like I said, the first five tricks are all coin tricks. I was shocked. <laughs> I was surprised. I was expecting like billets and center tears and, you know, switch wallets and whatnot. And it was just coin trick, coin trick, coin trick. And I was like, wow, okay, coin tricks. But they're all coin tricks with like date predictions. And uh, like I said, there's coin bends in there. Mark's gonna teach you the Shandow switch, which is key for several of those effects. Then the first essay is called Magician's Guilt. I love this chapter more than anything else in this book. And it's not just because I think what Mark Shandow said is important and needs to be said, but it was already something I, I already believed, right? So it, whenever you hear something repeated back at you that you already believe, you end up liking it that much more. 
<laughs> and if you don't know what magician's guilt is, I'll give you an example. Um, on this channel, a lot, I promote marked decks, specifically reader back cards, where the back of the deck actually says KD, King of Diamonds, right? And the ones I love the best are, are good for people with poor eyesight, because I wear glasses. And a lot of times people will post in the comments, my spectator could totally read the backs. Well, of course they could, because you can, <laughs> right? You can read the backs, so they can too. The problem is, is that they saw the markings. And the reason why they saw the markings is because you telegraphed the markings. Somehow along the way, as you were holding that deck, you held it in such a way and you looked at it in such a way that alerted the spectator that it was marked. The fault is not in the marked deck, the fault is in the performer. And this is what Mark's talking about. Where he talks about all the gimmicks and all the gaffes and all the book tests that we buy and how we treat them when we perform. And he calls this magician's guilt. We act differently when we say, I have a normal deck of cards and we know that it's not normal, right? I have this normal nickel or this, I bought this book at, you know, I was down in New York City and I was browsing through like old fat timey bookstores and I came across this very old copy of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Like we have this elaborate story about how we found this book instead of just saying, I bought this book on Amazon, <laughs> right? To overprove that it's a normal book when in fact it's a gaffe. So just to give you an idea about Mark's writing style and this favorite chapter of mine, I'm gonna read one paragraph one paragraph, I'm sure Mark won't mind, right, uh, about this, because I want you to, I also want you to see Mark's writing style. Mark, I want you to hear Mark's voice, okay? Learn how you handle ungaffed things and then treat the gaffes exactly the same, no matter how much they cost. And yes, abusing an expensive gaff when you are completely skint is far harder than even the most knuckle-busting slight. If the gaff prevents you from handling it in your natural way, you need to find a method to ensure that the difference in handling makes complete and utter sense to an observer within the context of the routine. Learn that there are no dummy billets. There are only billets. There is no such thing as a gaffed book. All books are simply books. And I would add playing cards or playing cards, right? They're all made from the same paper. Handle your gaff cards exactly like you would handle any other card. Moving on, the next trick is called numbers and it's a lottery prediction that uses a real lottery ticket. It doesn't use one of those fancy apps, doesn't use one of those microscopic printers, right? It's something you can do using a real world lottery ticket. After numbers comes pictures. Pictures is a drawing duplication that you can do with a stack of business cards or billets. Next up is Nod to pocket Pete, where you will be able to accurately predict multiple items. And then after that is my favorite trick in the book. I already told you what my favorite essay was. This is my favorite trick. It's called getting to know you from memory. This is a combination of Fraser Parker's Memoria and a little bit of Peter Turner and a little bit of Vandalay thrown in. It's a two-part, almost three-part routine where a spectator chooses a card from the deck that they say best represents them, best represents their personality. And then without showing it to you, they don't write it down, you don't force it. Then they also choose a memory. They choose a memory from their childhood and you are able to lock in on their memory, tell them, explain their memory to them and reveal their playing card to them. The next essay is my second favorite essay. <laughs> And again, it's one of those things that I think everyone should read. It's called Going Pro. Mark pulls the curtain back on the allure that we have that, oh, I want to be a professional magician. Like, I want this to be my full-time job, my full-time career. He says, hey, it's not all glitz and glamour, right? You, you think you're going to be out there doing tons of magic. And he says, in reality, you're going to be doing a lot of promoting. <laughs> you're going to be doing a lot of phone calls. You're going to be doing a lot of bill collecting. So he kind of like gives you the reality. And it's sad too, because even within that essay, he tells you that he pulled away from magic for a little while and went back into the real world to get a job. And so uh, it's very, very, very eye-opening. After that, there's a rock, paper, scissor routine. And then after that, there's another great essay. This book is full of great essays. Uh, this one is called Respecting the Art. Then after that, there's two out to lunch tricks. 
After that, there's a little chapter on the center tear, which is kind of cool. After that, another essay, another essay called Making Sense of It All. After that, there's like a principle that he talks about called the thought stacking principle. And then there's a series of tricks that are all professionally bought. So these would be tricks that you'd buy in the store. So he's gonna talk to you about his own handling on these commercial effects. So he's gonna talk about Glance from Steve Thompson, Prevaricator from Patrick Redford, the iForce app by Greg Rossami, Director's Cut by Simon Shaw, and Magic SMS from Angelo Carbone. Following that, he has a series of effects that he says are not fully fleshed out that they're not fully audience tested, but he threw them in there anyway, just for you to see what you could do with them. And then my book has the bonus content. The bonus content is another essay. Uh, it's a submission from Mark and then a bunch of submissions from his friends. So you get Dicing with Death. It's a stage and dice effect with six spectators. Uh, a wonderful essay called What Would Peter Turner Do? Probably a question that I ask myself every single time I'm faced with doing a, or learning a new mentalism trick. Then Numis Mattis, this is a Mark Elston effect. It's a coin and witch pocket routine. One Thought Across from John Kerry. Here's a Cars Across with a very strong element thrown in. Thought Unlinking, this is from Michael Murray. It's a powerful tool in mind reading. The Searchlight Principle by Mike Phillips. This is a letter and word guess that looks like real mind reading. And then you'll get an afterward from Atlas Brookings. Writing style, that's... Uh, one of the things I love about Mark is that it doesn't feel like you're reading a textbook or a magic journal. It really feels like you're sitting down with a friend or a teacher, because that's, that's what I would call Mark. I would say he's, a he's your teacher, right? And he's very patient with you and he's very funny, very humorous, throws out uh, humor all the time and you kind of hear his, his tone and some of his like, some of those jokes, man, they slide right underneath and if you're, if you're sharp, you catch them. And like I said, the essays are the best part of the book for me. Uh, lots of ideas, something for everyone, definitely. Again, even though uh, you know the book is targeting mentalists, I think there's something there for everyone. I think uh, if you're a magician and you love to read just good quality magic books, you'll love this. I will also say that aside from the marketed effects that I talked about, there's several other tricks that assume you have some of these mentalism tools. He'll reference uh, magic wallets, switch wallets, out to lunch wallets. He'll re reference uh, bonsalope envelopes, of course, billets, uh, marked cards, all kinds of gimmickry that you probably have in your drawers. The other great thing about Mark is there's tons of crediting, tons of moments where he said, I asked for permission. And I like reading about crediting because not only does it show you where the people you like draw inspiration from, but it also name drops ideas so that you can go out and look those things up yourself. All right, that's everything I can say about the first Harper Crown book from Mark Shandow. I wanna really thank Mark uh, for allowing me to have this copy so that I could do the review for you. I will stick a link down below where you can go and purchase it yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time, bye. Hey, and before I go, I just wanna let you know that if you are looking for a friendly community made up of professional, and amateur magicians just like yourself, be sure to check out the Magicians Forum at themagiciansforum.com. The Magicians Forum is helpful, clean, and you'll be able to ask questions and receive advice from people who know what they're talking about. Come see where masters like Harry Lorraine and Pop Hayden hang out. Oh, and of course, I'm there too. Looking forward to seeing you. Have a great week.